Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire! <laughs> and I'm super related to be scrutinizing another swing dance video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and headbutt that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. Today, it looks like I'm going to Winter Jump 2020. We're gonna be watching a improvisation with Laura and Remy to the piano of David Skinner. Or Skinner. Not sure. But either way, both of these dancers are super dope. They've got reputations for throwing it down and I wanna see what they do in the moment. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you the absolute truth about my feelings of this performance. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right. Yes. Ah. Oh. So far I've watched a couple of these with some of the other uh, performers. And it's been hit or miss. It's been hit or miss, and I don't know what I don't know what to expect on this one. It's gonna kind of surprising. For me, it's kind of hard to dance with the piano, like as the main thing. You know, when you get that in like a jam or something, and that's the part where you've got to show off. It's kind of hard. It's it really is. Whoever gets the trumpet is like automatically the one where everybody pays attention to. All right, piano man David Skinner. Let's see what's up with Laura and Remy. It's like, where's the beat, bro? <laughs> okay, so they're gonna up tempo, yes, sir. Both of these dancers are so incredibly musical. I'm surprised. They're, they're showing a tremendous amount of restraint right now. I don't know if they're just waiting for the song to modulate a lot, but it's really cool to see this. I like that little move that they did right there. That was, that was cool. Footwork, folks. Okay. So that's that's what I'm normally used to seeing with this couple. Lots of really interesting syncopations with the beat. And they're letting us have it. I see what they were going for. Oh, the slip slops, folks. Did you see that? Pick it up now. It's, 
yes. <laughs> I know some of you haters are going to be like, that was choreographed. I know it. All right. <laughs> what are they doing? Is that a snake? Belts and shoes. That's good. That's a new one. That was really, really good. Let's talk about it. Man, man, man. I got to tell you guys, I was a bit I was a bit worried at the beginning of this when David was on the piano and he started playing and I thought, you mean they're not going to have any rhythm section? That's not right, man, because everybody else had some rhythm section, some drums and some some feeling, some bass. And uh, he was he started off a little slow and I thought the dancers were kind of a little worried, too. But then they kind of kicked it in and they gave him the right kind of tempo. And then when the beat kicked in, oh, that was that was so good. That was so good. I will tell you guys, I I thought this was really evenly matched. With all three of them. I mean all three, meaning the the group in concert. You had the piano player, David. You had the, uh, the leader was Remy. And the follower was Laura. I think they all meshed well. It's a very rare thing when I can see the dancer's personality match the tone of the music. That's Sometimes it's just a naturally organic thing for certain dancers. They just kind of fit a personality. They're... You know, they're a little bit more syncopated or they're a little bit more low key. And there's certain instruments just that that accompany their personality better than others. I got to say, this was I did not expect this one to match so well. I really did not expect it. I didn't. And I, I think uh, I, you got to be careful. Like as a judge, you got to be super careful because if you have a bad start, you can be super cynical. And you're just, you know, if anybody does anything good after that bad start, you're like, we'll do 20 more good things. And I'll forgive that little blunder in the beginning. <laughs> you know, I don't want that as a judge. I, I just, I like to put myself in the moment and just kind of feel what the audience feels. And I got to tell you, the fact that they exercised a tremendous amount of restraint, that was quite impressive. I can tell you now, I remember the majority of their syncopations that they did with their footwork simply because they didn't do it on every single phrase. A lot of dancers do that like all the time. Nothing wrong with that. We can all see what's happening, but after a while, something within our brains begins to just kind of go on autopilot and you no longer pay attention to what's actually happening because it looks like it's just too much. And in this case, there were like at least three or four things that they were doing with their footwork that just really stood out because earlier on, they weren't doing a whole bunch of stuff. They were just kind of showing us how they looked doing basic swing dancing. That's really, that's really huge, man. These are mature dancers, and that's a huge lesson, especially for you younger dancers out there who have a lot to say. When I came into swing, I had a lot to say. I was already a professional dancer. I had a chip on my shoulder. I was like, this, these nerdy kids are not going to beat me at this. That was my hip hop attitude. When I first saw Jam Circle, I saw those guys out there. I was like, no, I'm sorry. That's not going to be the case. I'm going to come in here and slaughter everybody. And then the next year I went back to that event and I did do that. But I changed in that process. I realized this is the kind of dance that is a bit more mature. It's not just battle mode the entire time. It's not just showing all your fancy stuff. It's not just about all the crazy ideas. A lot of it is about how you put those ideas into real play and, and, and in swing time with the audience watching you and, and trying to balance all of, all of the material that you have. You've got the skill, you've got the talent, you've got the musician and finding that unique balance knowing when to lead things, knowing when to follow things, knowing when to embellish certain things, is a, is a real gift. It's a real skill set. And I appreciate these dancers because I'm telling you, it's not easy to show that amount of restraint in your dancing and then create moments that are memorable with syncopations. It's super easy 
to do them too much. And they did not do that, guys. This was really cool. I might say this was my favorite one out of, out of what I've been watching here with this format. I've never had the opportunity to see a format like this before where the dancers basically draw out of a hat and they pick out uh, one instrument and then they just dance with the band. I think that's cool. I think that's really, really cool and gets down to the heart of what this is all about. Dancing and playing music. And they repped it. They really crushed it. So what did you guys think? That's what I feel. I think they crushed it. I don't know what I would have made better in this one. I, I really don't know. If I was seeing it for the first time, I think I still would have been impressed. I still would have been impressed if I saw it at the very, at the very beginning. It was my first exposure to swing. I still would have been impressed by what I saw, even as a professional dancer looking at Lindy Hop for the first time. In my opinion, I think the, the, the one that stood out to me the most was Laura. She and, and I'm a leader. <laughs> Where is that? I'm usually looking at what the leader's doing, trying to see what kind of new move they're doing. I'm like, okay, when are they going to throw in something I haven't seen before? And she was doing that more in my mind than Remy was. I think he was taking it a little easier. He was kind of setting things up and just kind of being a little bit more reserved so that as the music was modulating, he was just kind of adding a little bit more at a time. And that's cool. That's cool because I didn't expect that. But I will tell you, I didn't expect some of the syncopations that I saw with Laura. She, folks, crushed this. She was doing some kind of slip slop thing on a swing out. It's one thing to be able to do a swing out and be like technically proficient where everything feels good and all of that stuff that we like to uh, overemphasize. But it's a whole nother thing to be able to do that, maintain the control in your body and still do other stuff with your feet and it doesn't look jarring. She is, guys, for me, she's like top three in the world when it comes down to this kind of stuff. A lot of people sleep on her. A lot of people do. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Let me have a small. So everybody knows everybody. That's just how it is. That's unfortunate. Let's grow it so it can be bigger and, and more people can be recognized for what they're doing because she is one of my favorite dancers. Tell you a quick story. She was actually, <laughs> the very first event I went to was in Texas, in Houston, Texas, years ago. These people were wanting me to be a part of their board of directors. And I was like, oh man, I don't want to do this. What's this? They want me to go down to this event and go to this, go to the, it's, for me, I was like, I'm not interested in this event. I don't want to go with a bunch of swing dance people. None of them like professional. That was my attitude. It was like, this is not a professional dance. This is just, you know, band camp. That was my idea of what it was. So I went down there and I saw this jam circle, folks. Woo! I saw a jam circle for the first time and it just immediately put me in the hip hop mode. I thought, what are people running to the front of the stage for? I had an iPhone 3G. I pulled it out with its grainy screen and camera. I thought someone was fighting at the front of the stage. But to my surprise, it was my first time seeing a jam circle uh, in a swing event. And it wasn't just any jam circle. These were some of the, still the best dancers of all time. And I'm going to make a new uh, top 10 list of all time so you guys can see that. But she was also in that jam circle and I was blown away. I was blown away. She was also the first person I danced with that was a professional that helped me really understand like what Lindy Hop feels like, this idea of call and response. You know, I couldn't figure out why everything looked choreographed. You know, I was just like, how do you, where's the one? How do you get here? You know? And once I realized it was a delay every time I moved and she responded to that in a delayed way, I'm thinking like, you know, what is this? Like, what have you done to me? This is a weird rubber band effect. But she was the first professional. And I learned a big lesson with that. And that's always to be sharing what your knowledge is with those who are coming up behind you. Not just being standoffish, having the skills and sitting in your cat's corner, not doing that, but really reaching out to those people who are hungry to do this dance so they have a real good context and uh, parameter of what this really should be like if you're good, because I would have had no idea. I might not, have, I would have probably gone up to my hotel room and went to bed and I wouldn't have been able to see that jam circle or be inspired enough to wonder like, what is this thing that I feel like it's a rubber band? All of that, because she asked me to dance. How crazy is that? So there's a big lesson in there for you guys who um, don't like social dancing and you're good. Don't do that. There's, don't, 
Don't do that. That's not a good precedent. It's not a good precedent. But I'm telling you, uh, she's still one of my favorites. Remy is killer, guys. Uh, this was awesome. This is this was un I was not a, I was I'm getting tongue twisted here. I was really surprised by what I saw with him in terms of the restraint. I did not expect that. I just thought he was just going to do a bunch of syncopations, do a lot of different tricks, and he didn't do that, which was like, that's that's cool. It, it beat my expectations. I can't complain. So let me know what you guys thought about this couple in the comments section. If you are not in the game yet, you need to be. Don't be like I was. Don't be cynical thinking that this is just some little thing that, you know, nerdy kids do. Don't do that. It's really fun. It can be something that can change your life. It's changed my life. I'm, I know so many more people in my world now uh, for the good. They've enriched my lives all because of swing dancing, if you can believe that. And it looks difficult, but it's simple. I will say that it's not easy, but it is simple. And so check out my Fundamentals membership if you're looking for a, a very streamlined, clear, basic approach to be able to mature quickly at this dance and get to the point where you don't necessarily have to always have a teacher to uh, reassure you if you're doing something right or wrong. So I spent over 10,000 hours to figure this out and it's my gift to you. So check that out if you guys want to get better at swing dance. If you guys need some inspiration and you're, you were like me, once I got good at Lindy Hop, I was thinking, hey, let's just keep creating new stuff all the time. Let's add to this Lindy Hop legacy. Let's just keep adding some new stuff. Um, check out my free courses. I got like 25 to 30 free courses you can get um, just to get a feel of what it's like being a part of our Street Smart Swing community. I'm creating a lot of stuff next door in our home studio, um, sharing it every Monday and Tuesday with our online community, and I don't want you to miss out. So check that out. I will see you guys' comments below. Make sure that I get a chance to see you in one of my classes online. Take care.